Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Executive Editor of Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining this Dataversity webinar, Top 10 Enterprise Use Cases for NoSQL, sponsored by Couchbase. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Or if you'd like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag Dataversity. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and any additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now let me introduce to you our speaker for today, Shane Johnson. Shane is the Senior Project Man Marketing Manager at Couchbase. He is a former developer and evangelist with experience in Java and distributed systems. He has consulted with organizations in the, in the financial, retail, telecommunications telecommunications and media industries to design and implement system architectures that relied on distributed systems for high performance data access. And with that, I will give the floor to Shane to get today's webinar started. Hello and welcome. Thank you, Shannon, and hello, everyone. So just a small agenda here. Uh, we're going to open with a little bit of a description of Couchbase, uh, some of the trends that we see driving enterprises to consider NoSQL databases, uh, a little bit about our product and how it's helping, and then we'll spend the majority of time on the use cases themselves. And I promise to go very quickly through the boilerplate here. Um, Couchbase NoSQL is what we do. Uh, we have offices in North America, EMEA, APAC, uh, with tremendous growth, et cetera, et cetera. As far as what's driving uh, enterprises to you know, not only consider but evaluate NoSQL is a lot of the things that were challenges to the big internet companies. Uh, web and cloud, mobile in particular, uh, big data certainly for everyone. Uh, and just a few little snippets here to give you an idea of what that means, AOL advertising uh, it's handling billions of impressions per day. Uh, and so they need a solution that can give them not only high performance, but scalable access to that data. Uh, PayPal storing over 10 terabytes of data and over 1 billion documents. Uh, one of our uh, largest customers who will talk about their use case in a little while, uh, 800 million user profiles are stored in Couchbase server. I believe today it's approaching a billion uh, it may have even exceeded $1 billion by now. And no surprise, uh, the ability to store you know, unstructured, semi-structured data, uh, largely driven from a social environment. Uh, so I think these are probably fairly standard and, and fairly common. And the other thing I wanted to touch on uh, is really kind of NoSQL and Hadoop. Uh, it's a conversation I've been having more and more lately uh, in particular, we're seeing more and more of our own customers pairing Couchbase Server with Hadoop. Uh, we have one use case in particular that we're going to talk about today uh, where these two are working close together to solve a, a particular problem. But it's actually kind of a common theme across multiple use cases. Even though we might not talk about it up front, there's a pretty good chance that these use cases and some of these customers, they're probably using Hadoop in the background as well. Uh, but from the most basic point of view is they're using Couchbase Server as their NoSQL database for operational workloads. Uh, we're talking about interactive applications, web or mobile, um, millions of customers or consumers, uh, performance is extremely important. And on the other side, you have this Hadoop world, uh, which is largely analytical. Uh, in some respects offline, and tailored to a different audience. Uh, uh, when it comes to a NoSQL database, we're primarily concerned with our users and our customers. When it comes to Hadoop, we're going to be more concerned about data scientists and business analysts, kind of an internal, external type of environment. But we'll talk a little bit more about this later. And ultimately, we had the original trends. There's web, mobile cloud, big data, et cetera. Um, the reason that those trends are driving to NoSQL and why it was first experienced by internet companies is 
because relational databases are reaching a point where they're having difficulty keeping up with the requirements. Uh, we're seeing customers who they now need sub-millisecond response times. Um, not a couple seconds, not a second, uh, but, you know, less than a millisecond. The scalability is becoming unprecedented. Uh, as we just saw back on one of the first slides, PayPal storing over 10 terabytes of data. Uh, and that's not the largest amount by any means. Uh, so it's the ability to scale to not only store more data, but to serve more users as well. Speed, uh, of course, is important. And on one hand, we talk about the ability to access that data very quickly, but the other requirement is to be able to ingest that data just as quickly. Uh, if you think about all those mobile users out there, or Internet of Things, um, data is being generated by both machines and users in an extraordinary way, and you need a database that can ingest that data fast enough. And then kind of the move away from structured data into more unstructured data, abandoning a schema and a fixed data model to give you much more flexibility, not only in the type of data that you can store and manage, uh, but your ability to build new features or new services and to do so quicker. And there's a couple little quotes in here, I'm not gonna to go into them, but they're simply supporting this notion that uh, relational databases, they are hitting their limit. Uh, and for those enterprises that are approaching that limit, they're looking at NoSQL to take the next step and to continue. Uh, and on the flip side of it, from a customer point of view, it's the scalability and the performance. Uh, almost every time that is the, the, the single biggest drivers are going to be scalability and performance. There's a little bit about uh, where we're positioning right now, and this probably not entirely limited to us, uh, but certainly performance and scale is the big one. Uh, high availability, especially in enterprise environments, is equally as important. Uh, we talked about the flexible data model and all the benefit that that is going to give you. And then from a scalability perspective, it's not just the raw ability to scale, it's the ability to do it with ease and to do it economically. Um, certainly there are environments where you, if there's unlimited money thrown at something, uh, you can make it scale. But more importantly is can you do it with less money, less time, less overhead? Uh, and that's one of the big things that we're pushing. So Couchbase Server, how are we solving some of these problems? Now to give you a little bit of a, an introduction here, we have two products. We have Couchbase Server, which is your backend NoSQL database, and we have Couchbase Mobile. And so if we start on the left side here, Couchbase Server is a key value store in a document database rolled up into one, and we tossed in an integrated cache as well. Uh, so this single database can effectively be a high availability cache, a key value store, a document database, or any combination of those. The other side of it was Couchbase Mobile, which has two components. There is an embedded database, which can run on mobile apps for Android, iOS, uh, Windows, or even devices. Uh, that are running Linux and Java. Uh, so you have this local native database that you read and write to. And then we have the sync gateway, which basically is the bridge between Couchbase server sitting in your data center or in the cloud and Couchbase Lite, which is sitting on your mobile phone or device. And it's kind of a, a complete stack uh, that goes from one end of the spectrum all the way to the other. Some of the unique things that we'll get into a little bit later, uh, there's only one node type. So a single instance of Couchbase Server is responsible for all of these services uh, that you require. Replication is a key part of availability. So we talked about high availability being particularly important. And so replication is the means by which we can do that. And another one that we're gonna see pop up uh, in a number of use cases, and in particular some of the, the customers that fall into those use cases, is cross data center replication. Uh, some of our very largest customers are operating multiple data centers and need to be able to use all of them. And one of the ways that we accomplish that is memory to memory replication. So whether it's a cluster within a single data center or clusters deployed across multiple data centers, 
uh, that replication is essentially memory to memory and fairly quick. Multiple industries, uh, multiple companies, multiple use cases, there's a very broad uh, degree of adoption that we're seeing here. And some of these use cases that we're going to get into, um, they're going to fall within these particular industries and we'll reference some of these customers. Before we get into the really good stuff, I wanted to spend just a moment on CouchBase Server 4.0. Uh, that is our new major release uh, coming very soon. And in addition to all the use cases that we're going to talk about today, there are going to be new use cases uh, that come out of CouchBase Server 4.0. And so we'll give you a little sneak peek at what's going on here. Of the three major features, uh, multi-dimensional scaling is most applicable from an operational standpoint. Uh, so if you look at the three main services any database has to provide, that's the ability to read and write data, to index the data, and to be able to query the data. And so what we've done is we've actually pulled these functions apart into independent services. And so when you deploy a cluster, you can specify which services run on which servers. Uh, it's particularly fascinating from an efficiency point of view uh, and a scalability point of view. We'll have more on that in the future. SQL for documents is the one that I think is going to lead us to new use cases. Uh, and that is a query language based on SQL, but for JSON documents. And we'll have one slide to talk about that. And ForestDB, which is a new high performance storage engine, which is engineered specifically for multi-core processors and SSDs. Uh, we're going to be introducing ForestDB and CouchBase Server 4.0 to store the indexes. So SQL for documents, a couple of slides here as a preview. When we say SQL for documents, that is precisely what we mean. Uh, so the types of SQL statements you've seen before, select fields from table where, you know, field equals something, uh, group by, you know, all those types of keywords are available to you. Uh, in addition to this notion of raw SQL, there's also a query API, um, kind of have a fluent API slash DSL that you can use to build queries. Uh, or certainly you can simply submit SQL statements, JDBC, ODBC drivers, as well as framework integration. And just to give you a sneak peek at what it looks like, um, this is this is it. Uh, you have two approaches. You can simply submit a SQL string, uh, or as I said, you can use the DSL to build your query. Uh, so everything you can do in a relational database from the query point of view is what we're doing, but we're applying it to a document database. And a final note on that, uh, we just released a developer preview last week. Uh, so there's two URLs here. You can check out the coming in CouchBase Server 40 page where you can get more information on those three things I talked about, multi-dimensional scaling, SQL for documents, and ForceDB. Or you can go straight to the documentation, which will tell you where to download, how to get started, walk you through the quick start. Uh, we certainly encourage everybody to check it out and provide feedback. Now on to the use cases. There are certainly a lot of use cases out there. I don't think this represents every possible use case for a NoSQL database, but these are the 10 uh, most common that we see from our customers. Uh, profile management, by and large, uh, managing user profiles, uh, catalogs, which could be anything, but generally product or service catalogs, 360-degree customer view uh, is particularly interesting, and we see that in enterprises where customer data is stored in different silos throughout the organization. And what they're really trying to do is to aggregate all the data related to a customer into a single place so that they can have a single view of it. Uh, Real-time big data is a fun one, and that's one that I'm very uh, passionate about talking about. But that's, you know, bringing Hadoop and no SQL alongside each other, uh, in particular, uh, doing it in a real-time fashion. Personalization is a very broad term, but essentially what we're getting at is how can we optimize the experience for customers? Uh, it is the ability to collect 
information on users, whether it's demographic, behavior, uh, search, history, et cetera, uh, purchases they've made, preferences they have, to use that data and then deliver something that's very unique to them. Content management is probably self-explanatory. Uh, digital communication is particularly exciting. Uh, we'll talk about some of those. Internet of Things and mobile applications, um, kind of in the, in the same broader camp. Uh, and then fraud detection, which is particularly interesting. So we'll go through each of these 10. We'll start with profile management. Um, you know, as I just said, it's almost central to everything you do. Uh, if you have an application where it's web or mobile uh, and you have people that use that application, uh, but they register, then they have a user profile and you can't really do much without it. Um, from a business perspective, that user profile has to be immediately available to your users. Uh, when they sign in, they don't expect to wait. Uh, there's kind of this immediate uh, assumption that once I hit that button, I'm ready to go. The other one is kind of evolving profiles. Uh, so over time, new attributes are added to those profiles. Um, maybe it's because new features are being rolled out or new services, or we've discovered that there's some new, something new that we can learn about users. And if we can know that, uh, we can improve the service and a growing customer base. Uh, whether it's thousands to millions to billions, uh, the infrastructure has to be able to accommodate that type of growth. If we look at it from a purely technical perspective, it's the low latency. Uh, you need immediate access to that user profile. Uh, you need to be able to do away with a schema or fixed data model so that you can speed up you know, how quickly that user profile can evolve. And fast, easy scalability. Um, as the user base grows, it shouldn't be difficult to scale the database to accommodate that growth. Uh, if we talk about what we're doing from a couch-based point of view, uh, a big one is our integrated cache. So I said at the very beginning, uh, we are a key value store and document database, but we integrate uh, cache. And it's that integrated cache that gives us the really high performance and the really low latency. Uh, it is a document database based on JSON. Uh, so there is no schema and people can and do, you know, modify their data model on the fly. And what we call push button scalability, uh, particularly on commodity hardware, uh, it is easy to add new nodes. Uh, you start a node, you go into the administrative interface, uh, for the cluster, and you say, yep, I want to add that node, please do so. Uh, it is very quick and very easy. The customer that we are going to talk about for this one uh, is a Fortune 50 company, and it was one that was hinted at back on the, fifth, on the first slide. They have uh, a billion user profiles that they're storing, uh, and they started out storing those in Oracle. And so they have multiple data centers, and they're using Golden Gate to replicate that data between data centers. Uh, but as we also mentioned, they are running into scalability and performance issues, uh, let alone cost issues as well. And so they had considered other NoSQL databases, but ultimately moved in the direction of Couchbase Server to begin to offload data from Oracle, let it be served by Couchbase Server, and then move to turn on the cross data center replication so you can start to phase out Golden Gate. And then once you have all the data in multiple data centers replicated between each other, you can phase out Oracle database beneath the end. So it's kind of a, a quick overview of what happened there. Fraud detection. Uh, from a business perspective, uh, yeah, I think we could probably all safely assume why fraud detection is so important. Uh, but this is an environment where the customer data is changing very quickly. Uh, new accounts, uh, new detection rules, uh, new transactions. So it's fairly safe to say that we're getting a lot of new data very quickly, uh, and that data can change. And real-time responsiveness. Uh, I can't really exaggerate 
the requirement for speed because they need to check for fraud when you make a purchase. Uh, not the day after or the week after, but at the moment you're making a purchase, we need to see if it's possibly a fraudulent pur uh, purchase. And very high volume uh, of interactions, which we'll talk to when we look at the example. From a technical perspective, uh, certainly again, that flexible data model. Uh, they know they're getting new rules and new types of transactions and new types of customers and accounts. Uh, and they, be able to, they need to be able to support that. Low latency again, uh, as we were just saying, performance is critical and high throughput. Um, you know, these are kind of the cornerstones in this case. So again, they're going to benefit from a flexible data model. They're going to benefit from the integrated cache. Uh, that in particular is going to give them the very high throughput uh, and low latency they were looking for and the scalability. The customer behind this particular use case is one of the largest fraud detection platforms in the world. Their customers are essentially the largest financial institutions around, and they process 65% of the world's credit and debit transactions. So to give you an idea of the scope of what's going on, uh, the throughput is extraordinary, and the latency is important. And so I talked about a purchase. When you make a debit or credit card purchase at the store or at the restaurant, in the milliseconds it takes to make that purchase, they're checking it for fraud beforehand. Uh, so certainly latency and throughput are extraordinarily important for these guys. Our third use case is the Internet of Things. Uh, and this is a fascinating area to be in right now. Um, objectives might be a little bit different in so much as rather than existing applications or services being pushed to their limits, uh, the Internet of Things is actually opening up a world of new services and new products and new opportunities. Uh, everyone is just finding new ways to do it right now. The area that we're looking at in particular requires people to ingest uh, new types of data and, and very evolving data, uh, particularly when you look at, uh, look at the, you know, the smart home um, or the industrial internet. Uh, we are talking about new devices popping up on a daily basis, and those new devices are generating new data. Uh, and so if you're in a position where you want to begin collecting all the data being generated across multiple devices, uh, that data is not only different between devices, uh, but new devices are also generating new data. We need to interact with numerous devices, uh, sometimes unconnected, and we can talk about that a little bit later as well. Uh, so kind of from a concurrency perspective, um, we're not looking at the Internet of Things as in connecting to one thing. You're connecting to thousands, if not millions, of things. And guess what? those thousands to millions of things are generating massive data sets uh, on the order of billions of data points. So very, very high requirements here. From a technical perspective, um, certainly the flexibility because of all the new types of devices, the throughput because of the sheer amount of them, as well as you know, we introduce requirements that have to do synchronization. Um, it's one thing to create data while you're browsing on your laptop. Uh, it's another thing if you're generating data from a mobile phone where you're out of service or in the middle of a field of windmills or on an oil rig in the ocean. Uh, you can't always rely on a guaranteed Internet access, and so we do need some sort of solution that can support online as well as offline. And the scalability perspective is, you know, almost generating new degrees of scale. Uh, why Couchbase is chosen in this particular use case, again, the flexible data model, you're going to be able to adapt to new devices uh, or new firmware or software upgrades very quickly, much faster than if you had to change the schema on a relational database. As I mentioned uh, at the very beginning, Couchbase Server and Couchbase Mobile, when combined, gives you this ability to not only handle all these devices and all this data, uh, but to do the synchronization for devices and machines that may or may not be connected, or may not always be connected, and the push-button scalability. 
Uh, we see environments where start off small with respect to the number of things and very quickly grows to many, many, many things. Product catalog. Uh, from a business perspective, we can talk about things like being able to cross-sell, uh, maintaining inventory or being more efficient in how you do so. They need to store lots of different types of data. Uh, we can see some of the samples here from SKUs and part numbers and metadata, uh, but it can be tricky in that not all products have the same attributes. Uh, sometimes they're different, sometimes the values are different, so you need some flexibility there. Uh, updates can be very, very quickly, uh, whether you're changing the inventory, adding a new product, putting something on sale. Uh, this is an environment where the data isn't so much reference data, um, it's actually much more dynamic. And the customer experience is massively important. Uh, if you look at uh, e-commerce uh, or even in-person retail, uh, you need to be able to find what you want and purchase it very, very quickly. Technical requirements, and some of these are going to be uh, a little repetitive here, is certainly the flexible data model. Uh, as we just mentioned, they're going to need it uh, because this catalog is very dynamic and very diverse in what it stores. You're going to need very high read-write throughput, uh, low latency access, which is important to that customer experience, and the ability to store uh, large volumes of data. From a couch-based perspective, uh, once again, it's a document database with integrated caching uh, and very good scalability. And in this one, um, a good example from a customer perspective is Tesco, uh, which is the world's largest retailer in Europe. Uh, Couchbase server is used for many use cases, but in particular, uh, they're managing millions of products in this catalog. Uh, and it's always quickly changing and they have very, very large number of users uh, and a large amount of data. Digital communication, uh, it's pretty neat, but essentially you are connecting uh, customers, employees, uh, friends, uh, whatever nature that relationship might be online to hold a conversation. Uh, the data sets are massive. I mean, if you think about uh, how many text messages you and everyone you know are sending every day, uh, amplify that uh, for people that are doing this online. Uh, performance, nearly instant, right? It's impossible to hold a conversation if those messages are delayed in any way. In zero downtime, uh, these companies, when they can pull together, you know, millions and millions of users that have real-time conversations, uh, they can't afford the system to simply be down for any period of time. Uh, the negative impact and cost is extraordinary. And so from a requirements perspective, it's a little bit different uh, in that while they do need the scalability as well as the low latency, uh, it's the 24 by 365 availability that is extremely critical here. Um, as we mentioned before, we have the integrated caching and scalability. And in this particular use case, which we'll talk about a little bit more with the customer, is the replication and the cross data center replication. Uh, is key to availability. Uh, you need it within a particular data center, uh, but for a company like this, where they're operating on a much larger scale and with multiple data centers, it's important to have that cross data center replication so that you can tolerate the failure, not just of a node or a rack, but an entire data center. And the customer that we could talk about, uh, and this one is live person. And so if you've ever been to a website where a little pop-up form showed up with a picture of someone's face saying, you know, can I help you? Are you stuck? What can I do for you today? That's probably live person. Um, that is what they do. And that's essentially real-time chat. Uh, so they're chatting with millions of people who are on these websites. Uh, they have about 85 enterprise customers. So those very big popular websites, those are live person's customers. They do, I think, over 22 million engagements per month. Uh, they're bringing in terabytes of data. They're doing billions 
uh, of data points around those users. The, the, the sheer scale uh, is extraordinary. Another good example in this area is Viber. Uh, they have about 600 million users, I think a little bit more now, and they generally have about 200,000 concurrent users uh, at any point in time. So again, the, the scalability is extraordinary. Customer 360 degree view, uh, we mentioned this one at the beginning a little bit. Essentially what's happening is it's difficult to take advantage of the knowledge that you've gathered on customers when it is bits and pieces spread out across the organization in different databases or different data silos. Uh, and what the customers are really looking to do is to aggregate all that data into one single place, and then you can begin to interact with it and analyze it and learn from it. Uh, and so if we look at some of the technical requirements, certainly the data model flexibility. And this one should be obvious in the sense that if you want to take data that lives in multiple repositories and aggregate it, you're going to need a lot of flexibility in your model. You can't simply have this predefined fixed model uh, with the assumption that everything will fit into it. Uh, some customer some customers may have a lot of data, some may have a little. They may not share the same data. And so flexibility is critical, uh, as well as integration with Hadoop. Uh, from what we've seen with our customers, is particularly interesting here. Can they can begin to aggregate that data and then push it into Hadoop to learn about those customers, as well as low latency. Uh, so in this particular case, uh, the JSON model was particularly uh, helpful. Uh, we did Hadoop integration through streaming and integrated caching. And so in this case, if this was a Fortune 200 global brand company, global apparel, if you will, um, that was kind of doing a direct consumer online business. So they were beginning to sell directly to these consumers. And the workload was continuously growing. So they were just starting this venture, and sure enough, it was picking up momentum. The number of online interactions was uh, significantly increasing, and so they needed a certain amount of scalability uh, and a way to consolidate customer data uh, so it could be accessed not only by external customer-facing applications, but internal applications as well. Uh, and as they moved from more of a traditional infrastructure to a cloud-based elastic infrastructure uh, is the moment when they looked at Couchbase uh, to be that scalable database. Personalization, you know, as I mentioned before, there's a, a moment of truth where you have an opportunity to engage a user, uh, but the only way you can really take advantage of that is if you know about them. And if you have some information about them, you can offer them the right discount or the right promotion or the right related product uh, that can increase the chances uh, of making a successful purchase in this particular example. So there's large volumes of, cha of fast changing data. And what I mean by that is a particularly popular source of data is clickstream data. So as a person on the internet, every link you click, every page you visit, um, every time you search for something on Google, uh, these leave kind of a, a trail of crumbs uh, for what you're doing, and that's the click stream. And that is very fast. I mean, imagine if I was capturing every click you made in your web browser uh, right now, that's just you, how much data would be generated. And I'll multiply that times millions and billions and millions of people doing the same thing. And if you want to ingest all that data, it is a lot of data, uh, many concurrent users, uh, and again, zero downtime. It's just not acceptable. From a technical perspective, again, the flexible data model, high throughput and low latency um, in both directions. So high throughput, uh, certainly the ability to ingest this clickstream data, and low latency in that when you want to deliver someone uh, an offer, an ad, or a recommendation, that has to be immediate. Uh, scalability, and of course, the 24 by 365 availability. Um, I won't go into the Couchbase solution. I know I've said these things before, but if we look at you know, kind of a, a customer example behind this one, 
we can look at AOL advertising. Um, they are using Couchbase Server and Hadoop. Uh, they are one of the largest ad networks in the world, serving billions of impressions per month for hundreds of millions of visitors. And that's the scale that we're working at. So that data will, you know, there's kind of two things that happen. Um, all those visitor profiles are stored in Couchbase Server. So based on what you've been clicking on, um, your age, your location, et cetera, they kind of have a profile uh, of who you are as an internet visitor. Based on that profile, they will serve the most appropriate ad for you. And so as time goes on, uh, they're collecting this clickstream data, they're serving impressions, they're finding out what's clicked on, what's not clicked on. That data gets pushed back into do, where they can then run additional analysis on it with the goal of improving how effective those profiles are. Uh, so I might browse the internet, I go to some web page, an ad is served, and I don't click on it. Uh, an hour later, I go to another website and I see an ad, I do click on it. Um, eventually, my behavior is analyzed in Hadoop so that the next time around, they are less likely to serve an ad that I'm gonna ignore. Uh, because they're learning about me and they're trying to figure out what it is I like and what I don't like. Uh, and why they had to go, you know, why they chose to go with Couchbase Server uh, was really around the flexible data model and the performance. Uh, when you're serving ads to people, I think it's safe to say that ad has to be immediate. Uh, no one's going to go to a web page and wait a few seconds for a little loading section uh, for an ad to show up. Content management, um, you know, we, we talk a lot about semi-structured and unstructured data, and that's what we're getting at here is, you know, particularly from you know, a raw content perspective, uh, you're storing all different types of data, uh, and the applications that can be built on it are expecting very quick access to it. And so, yes, we need very flexible data model because we want to store a large variety of content uh, which might not be similar to each other. We're going to need that low latency access and the ability to scale um, as we generate more and more content. And so, you know, kind of one of the examples of this was uh, a Fortune 500 media company. Uh, they needed to deliver content to 50 million online visitors, and uh, they have 90 plus media outlets. So they were using Microsoft SQL Server uh, before they migrated to Couchbase Server. And part of what was driving that is they were discovering new types of content which were by and large semi and unstructured. Uh, and in order to kind of improve that online experience for all these 50 million plus unique visitors, uh, every month, they had to move to something that could provide better performance, had a more flexible data model, and scale a little bit more. Um, today, they're doing 50,000 reads and 10,000 writes per second, uh, which is more than enough for them to keep up with their demand. Mobile applications is a particularly uh, growing area uh, for certain. Um, you know, customers are building mobile apps uh, in, any, in, in many different ways. Uh, we can talk about a few here in a second. One of the things that we have to contend with uh, from a business perspective and the reality is that there may or may not be a connection. You know, it would be nice to think that we always have internet in our pocket, uh, but if you've ever been on the subway, an airplane, um, on a rural highway, you know, there are times, or even a very crowded area like a stadium event, um, your internet connection can be anywhere from, you know, not very usable and pretty slow to simply not there. Uh, so we have to deal with that. A fast times market, uh, especially in the gaming sector, uh, everybody wants to be the next big iOS app or the next big Android app. Um, time to market is critical here. The you know publishers have to be rolling out uh, games quickly and to add new features and to expand on those games quickly. And supporting multiple device types and platforms. 
uh, especially in the, in the mobile environment. We thought it was bad with desktop browsers. Uh, then now you get into a mobile environment with iOS, Android, and Windows, uh, three separate platforms whose native abilities are not often uh, functional with other platforms. And so as we begin to look at more of the technical requirements, well, if we can't have a network connection, our technical requirement is, you know, we need to be able to store data on the device until such time as it can be pushed to the database. Um, if we're storing data on the device and we're storing it in the cloud, we need an ability to synchronize data between the two. And certainly scalability. Um, we've had customers who release a game on day one uh, with very few users, handful of nodes, and within a matter of months, they're moving into tens of thousands of users as they become a very popular game. And they just add nodes every step of the way, every couple of months, they add more nodes to support an additional 10, 20, 30,000 uh, users. So the solution that we present, which we highlighted earlier, was Couchbase Lite. That's the database that's going to run in your iOS or Android app, uh, as well as the Sync Gateway, which is going to ensure that that data is pushed to the cloud or if other devices push to the cloud, it gets pulled down to your device. So it's bi-directional in the scalability as well. And a good example here is Ryanair, who's been in the press lately. Uh, one of Europe's largest airlines uh, is building a brand new mobile app to support more than one million travelers. Uh, they're moving from a relational database to Couchbase Server and Couchbase Mobile. And in particular, you know, they needed a remote backend database, but they also needed something in the app uh, so that they didn't always have to be online. And that way, the app application itself was always working, regardless of the network connection. Real-time big data uh, is really, really interesting. And we could do a whole presentation on this if we had the time for it. Uh, but essentially, it's the ability to extract information from big data uh, as it's being generated. Uh, if you look at traditional big data and kind of the offline approach, you store some data in Couchbase server, you push it into a dupe later on, you learn from it, then you go back and you push that into Couchbase server. And that's what we were talking about uh, just a little bit a minute ago with personalization. Uh, in this case, it's not just a large volume of data that you have to contend with. It's the sheer speed that it's being generated, right? And you need to be able to interact with different analytical platforms. And this goes kind of in both directions. So we had the scalability and throughput, we had the flexible data model. Uh, probably the defining aspect here is integration with Hadoop. And so we have that not just in a batch scenario with something called Scoop, but as well with streaming options, whether it's something like Kafka or messaging, or it is Storm, maybe Spark for stream processing. Uh, there are any number of options there, and that is really allowing people to learn from that data immediately as opposed to when it's too late in some regards. And so the, the example we can kind of talk about here uh, with real-time big data is PayPal. And so PayPal is using Cloudflare Server and Storm and Hadoop and all these tools to do real-time analytics. Uh, they're collecting quick stream and interaction data, which I mentioned earlier. Um, they can then analyze it as it comes in, filter it, enrich it. Um, after it's actually been processed, uh, it can be put into a NoSQL database like Couchbase Server, so it can be accessed by different visualization tools. Um, this all has to happen in real time. And yet, the data still gets moved into Hadoop as well for some of the offline analysis. So that was a really quick run through uh, of 10 very popular use cases for NoSQL. Do we have any questions?
Hi, Shane. Thank you so much for this presentation. Uh, we definitely have questions come in. And of course, the most popular question is always uh, it, whether or not people will receive a copy of the slides. So just a reminder, I will be sending out a follow-up email within two business days with links to the slides and links to the recording of this presentation, along with anything else requested throughout the webinar. Uh, so just a couple of questions here for you, Shane. Um, one comment that came in, what about transactional, not referential in, uh, integrity and recovery? So it looks like there's a couple things there. From a transactional perspective, uh, CouchBase would fall into the same category as most NoSQL databases, where we tend to say that uh, rights are asset in the single right sense. So if you insert your user profile, um, that right will be acid. It does not, however, do multi-document rights. Uh, so if you think of having to insert three things within a transaction, so to speak, that's not going to be there. And part of the reason why is a move from a relational model. So if you had a, let's say it was a purchase, you bought something, uh, we know that within that purchase is some information on you, uh, the method of payment, uh, might be line items. Those things might be broken up and stored into different tables in a relational database. So it only makes sense you need a transaction to ensure that all these different pieces of data are all written. In a NoSQL world, all of that could be rolled up into a single document, and then you just insert that document. I hope that helps. I believe so. And kind of a tough question for you, Shana. Maybe you could answer it here. Maybe it might be something that you can send uh, for me to include in the follow-up email. But can you show an example of what is in the key and in and the value for one or more of the use cases? Mm. Key and value. Um, you know, I, I could just make one up off the top of my head here and say that for user profiles, the key is ultimately up to you from an application point of view. Uh, that key could be an email address. It could be, um, you know, a social security number. But that key, at the end of the day, is a known key. So you know something about that user, and that's how you're going to retrieve them. And then the value is just a JSON document. Um, so when you create that user profile is going to include their name and their address and um, any of their preferences. But think of it as being written. One big document can have all the information about that user. And going forward, when you want that profile, you can just fetch it by their username or their email or their social security number. But whatever that identifier is that you selected for users, that becomes the key. Thank you. Perfect. We've got a lot of questions going on here, so I want to get make sure we get through them. Um, uh, just to follow up from the previous question, Shane, uh, in regards to transactional integrity and recovery, I think you answered most of it, but just a couple of uh, follow-ups that were on that. As data is replicated, do you take advantage of the total throughput available? That is, can reporting become, come from all servers? Emphasize on all. Yeah, no, and that's a great question. Um, if you deploy, I'll just use three because it's easy, uh, three nodes, all three nodes are doing reads and writes. Uh, if we go one level deeper, each node uh, is the primary for some subset of data. And so we could say that Shane Johnson's profile, the primary owner is node one. Now, my profile might be stored on node 2 and node 3 as well, depending on the configuration. But every time someone wants to read and write my profile, it happens on node 1. Node 2 might have someone else's profile. It might have my boss's profile. Uh, and node 3 might have some other colleague's profile. So at the end of the day, the data is distributed evenly across every node. Each one owns a particular subset of it, but might maintain copies of someone else's data just for availability reasons. 
Thank you for expanding on that. The next question is, is JSON, Couchbase, and Key Value the same concept? If not, what are the differences? Yeah, I think in some respects, you could probably say that every NoSQL database is a key value store in that the original, uh, if not primary, way of interacting with them is that given some key, you want to insert or update data or read it. Um, a document database simply makes the assumption that the value is JSON. And if we know that it's JSON, we can do things like index it or allow you to query it. Um, in a key value system, sometimes the value is arbitrary. Uh, it could be text, XML, uh, an audio file, binary, a serialized Java object, we just don't know. Uh, so there's not as much we can do with it. But if, we, if it is a JSON document, uh, we can read that document and we can parse out those fields and index them and then let you query them. And how do you get data out of Couchbase for other business processing? So there's a few ways to get data out of Couchbase. Um, right now we have clients for multiple languages. Um, certainly all the big ones, Java, .NET, C, C++, uh, Ruby, Go. Um, there's kind of a whole bunch of them in there. I'm probably forgetting some off the top of the head, but chances are whatever your preferred language is, there's a client that lets you read and write to Couchbase server. On top of that, uh, there are some RESTful services uh, for querying data. And with Couchbase Server 4.0, uh, as I kind of previewed in the beginning, you'll have ODC, JDC drivers as well. Uh, so I would say getting data in and out is really easy when you're building your own applications. And pretty soon with 4.0, um, even easier if you have ODC, ODBC, JDBC uh, requirements. I love how technical this conversation is going. Um, and how do you back up databases? Yeah, so Couchbase Server has um, kind of a variety of approaches there. So we do uh, complete backups, we do cumulative backups, and we do incremental backups. Uh, so you could back up your data every Sunday, and then every you know, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you do kind of a differential backup. And then if you need to restore, you can basically restore using a big backup along with all the incremental ones. So suffice it to say, there is a lot of uh, features there to allow you to back up and restore data. And is there data compression? Yes, there is. Uh, I, off the top of my head, I do not recall what we're using uh, in 3.0, but in 4.0, we'll begin using Snappy. So the data is compressed. Very cool. Um, and what about systematic business rules? Is uh, Visua basic code stored within with data or the user profile? You know, being a... Being a key value store, what you put in the value is up to you in some respects, but in my experience, I haven't seen anyone mixing and matching code and data. Uh, that user profile is usually just elements of that profile, the name, the address, uh, et cetera. It's not mix and match with code per se. All righty, and um, it's, I love this next question. Question, how are large objects processed more efficiently using Couchbase than associating structured, semi-structured, unstructured data in different spaces, multiple files, using relational calculus and RDBMS? That's a great question. I, you know, it, depending on how large your object is, uh, a NoSQL database, whether it's Couchbase server or any other one, may or may not be the right fit for you. Uh, if you're looking at a file, a log file that's gigabytes, you know, large, or you're looking at a movie file uh, that's even larger, uh, Hadoop and HDFS in particular uh, is probably going to be the way to go for you. What we have seen uh, with some people in this environment 
is you would store the metadata at Couchbase server. So you might store this very large object on a file system somewhere, but in Couchbase server, the metadata tells you where it's located in the file system, what the title is, when it was created, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But if it's very big, I wouldn't recommend putting it in Couchbase server. Interesting, I love that answer. Um, what use cases are uh, rationalized based on the flexible data model as opposed to the scalability requirement? In our case, we do not have the large scalability requirement, but we are interested in the data model flexibility. Yeah, and I think that's a, you know, entirely spot on too. There are certainly some customers that have uh, larger scalability requirements, but that's not true for all of them. Uh, a lot of them can start with as little as three nodes. Uh, to get going, and one of the nice things about Couchbase Server is you get a lot of bang for your buck. Uh, so those three nodes can probably buy you, you know, many thousands of operations per second, depending on the size of the hardware. From a flexible data model perspective, um, I would say that, you know, most use cases are going to benefit from a flexible data model. Maybe not all use cases. Uh, you would certainly have to see you know, you have to put some thought in how you're modeling your data. So if, you know, I tend to think that relational data can be hierarchical uh, when you look at it. And if that's the case for you where you realize that, oh, you know what, I could nest all of my related data into a single document, then you're going to benefit from that. Uh, certainly with 4.0 rolling around in these new query abilities, it's not required. You can certainly reference other documents uh, within a single document. Um, but yeah, you probably just have to put a little bit of thought into it, but my instinct tells me you, you'll benefit from it just as many others have as well. And, and you know, I'm going to skip around a little bit just while we're on the topic of modeling. Are there any data modeling tools such as Erwin used for modeling Couchbase Server? I am not familiar with any modeling tools uh, as far as software and app that you could buy, uh, but there's certainly lots of um, good reading out there on best practices for modeling data in a document database. Um, and oh, this questioner wants to know, how do you, how do you query the value part? Uh, just in reference to something you had mentioned earlier um, that is interesting, I thought you can um, just look up via the key. You can do both. Uh, if I inserted my profile and I use my email address, I can update it or fetch it based on that email address. But at the same time, because it's JSON uh, and you can create indexes, you can start to look for uh, fields within it. There might be a location field, a city or a state, uh, or a date joined field. Uh, you can then index those fields so that someone else might want to create a report that says, give me all users who live in California, or give me all users who signed up more than a year ago. Uh, so it's the ability to do both. I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions here. Uh, thank you for submitting all these. I love the activity coming in. I, I love this next question. If a naughty app uh, drops bad data into the database, is it possible to back out the updates from a single app and restore the data? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's probably safe to say. It, it would depend, you know, I'd probably have to understand the scenario a little bit more, but certainly because of the, the backup and restore tools available, uh, if something wrong happened, uh, you could only restore to a certain point if you wanted to. Um, otherwise, I guess it would depend kind of on this bad data and the best way you want to get out of there. Makes sense, and I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much to the attendees for submitting so many questions and being engaged in everything that we do. Shane, thank you for this fantastic presentation. Um, very informative, and obviously there's a lot of interest out there uh, in this with the questions that had come in. Uh, just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides and the recording of this session. Uh, and a thanks to Couchbase for sponsoring today's webinar. And thanks, as always, for taking your time to attend and be engaged. I hope Thank everyone you. has great day.